Well, there's something a little bit different than we normally talk about. What we normally talk about is that apes, aliens, or Adam? Where did we come from? But you know, a very important part of where we came from then extends to what do we do while we're here? And then the next progressive question is, where do we go from here? And that's going to be the topic of our discussion. So if you're interested in prophecy, I'm talking about the real thing. Not the stuff that people are pawning off with tarot cards and Ouija boards. That's a bunch of spiritualistic nonsense. This is the real thing. So if you're interested in at least considering a possibility that this is the real thing, then this is where you need to be here today. You're probably wondering, who is this old guy on here? Well, this old guy has been on for about three and a half years. We haven't been getting on live as often as we have in the past, but this morning I wanted to make an exception. I'm glad you're here. We also want to field your questions. If you have any real questions about prophecy, what's going to happen in the future? I'm happy to do my very best to explain. Front and center here is called the metal man. And he's not completely made out of metal, but majority is. He is a depiction of the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2. And in Daniel chapter 2, it's a very compelling story. Now, maybe you'll see somewhere in this live where there'll be a link to a series. Yes, we are doing a promotion for that. But more so, we are doing something for you, and that is answering questions. Um, and I am going to take them. I'm glad you love the pseudoscience. Very good. Maybe this, uh, this type of uh, extension that we del delve into every once in a great while will be more to your liking, and that is prophecy. Now, as a kid, I was always in, interested in Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, you know, um, Nostradamus, I found out, you know. You know, the documentary with Orson Welles on Nostradamus, when I was in the Navy, we, sh we uh, showed that, video, that movie. It was a 16 millimeter movie. And at the very end of the movie, Nostradamus gives a prediction and actually states a date to where this huge cataclysm was supposed to happen on planet Earth. I can't remember the month, but I can tell you the year because I remember numbers really well. And that number was in my brain for uh, four years. It was 1988, 1988. Um, and that's when the, basically the end of the earth, not exactly, it was supposed to continue on, but Thank you, Eric, for the for the rose. I appreciate it. It was supposed to continue on, but huge, massive, never happened. Nostradamus seems compelling. He's fake. Jean Dixon, for those of you that are older, may remember her. Eh. The local person in your church that states that they're a prophet. Eh. Go to the book of Daniel chapter 2 and read it. It's like a, it's like a novel. It's not that long. It's very compelling. <clears throat> 1888 reasons the end will happen in 1888. I remember the book. <laughs> Interesting. Well, Nostradamus was one of the ones that made that prediction. I'm not sure who else did. But I've seen predictions since 1984 is when I got interested in all of this. I've seen predictions inside and outside and in different churches, and they all seem to fail. Now, does that mean that that's not, something isn't going to happen at some point? Absolutely, it's going to. And this prophecy right here explains in a continuous, is that a word? Can I say continuity, but continuitous? <laughs> is that even a word? <laughs> it starts in 605 BC and continues on. Each of these represent something. And in the Metal Man Prophecy on series, we go into it quite extensively. I'm hoping that the series is a hit. And here's a, just continuously. Okay. <laughs> I hope the series is a hit because then it shows there's interest because the next one is going to be the golden metal man of Daniel three. And I would love to get into this one. This one has to do with issues that are going to happen, have slightly happened in the past. And I think the USA are the feet the last kingdom. Great question and great, uh, great. You guys are, I'm glad you're thinking 
because these do represent kingdoms. Look at the feet. Clay and iron. This is where we are. And it's symbolically, he's standing on top of the world. <clears throat> Richard, I know you think it's funny. And I, I never made fun of it, but I was on the other side of the coin uh, as well, too, at one time. Um, I just didn't take an interest in it enough to have a very strong opinion against it, to characterize them, uh, the Christians or people that believed in creationism or prophecy, to, um, uh, to make fun of them. Um, I do know that I did one time when we were at Denny's, the Jesus freaks, we used to call them, would come in right after their, their uh, Wednesday night prayer meeting. But they were so hyped up emotionally, it was weird the way they acted. They, did, they acted kindly and everything, but there was this aura of excitement um, that was um, unnatural. And it wasn't something that I thought that was good at the time. And I still don't think it is. Because it's not that it's wrong to be excited about something, but to work yourself up through shouting and speaking in tongues and drums and electric guitars like at a rock concert. And then to take that and say, that's Christianity. No, it's not. <laughs> and a lot of people are going to disagree with that because it feels good. It's not necessarily Christianity. Does that mean you can feel good as a Christian? Absolutely. But not to where you're manufacturing a feel feeling in an environment that is artificial and it feels real. That's where the problem is. You know, the mark of a Christian is someone who has the faith of Jesus and keeps the commandments of God. That's the individual. So those of you that may be prejudiced about Christianity, I got news for you. All you got to do is, and this is the most difficult thing to do, because a human pride of opinion and everything is to set it all aside and go and read what the, what the embodiment of it really looks like. And the most uh, potent, the most accurate is to see what G how Jesus rolled. It's very impressive. Forget about the movies and, and, the, and, and what you perceive to be or, or read maybe one scripture or something. But when you read the narratives and actually ask the question, who is this individual? Um, it's very, 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 very touching. Um, and it's, uh, I think that uh, if, if one was to objectively sit down, uh, everybody thinks they're objective. <laughs> but if somebody was to sit down and actually read it and just say, okay, let's see what this says before I go any further mocking them, uh, you know, I think you'd be at least uh, impressed and respectful and understanding if you can understand that maybe somebody out there is not representing it or representing some kind of facsimile of it. So just an idea. Prove it. It's been documented just like Washington. Uh, George Washington, we documented it, you know. Sure, we have his wig and his false teeth, but we documented through uh, historical records, and that's what it is. But people will argue against it. All you got to do is just read it for yourself and see. Now, the Metal Man prophecy, that is something that we're promoting because we feel that it's absolutely necessary for people to focus on something that is not something that you see on TikTok, typically. Uh, typically, you see either Christians saying, prove me wrong, atheists saying, prove me wrong, um, Ouija boards, not so much, but tarot cards there has been in the past. And, um, you know, read it for yourself, okay? That's all I can say. Uh, let's see. All thoughts are prayers. All words are prayers. All actions are prayers. Okay. I had no earthly father to look up to. I realize now that my heavenly father, actually our fathers, our dads are supposed to be the model of, of what God is like. That's the ideal at least. Okay. So if you have an abusive father, sometimes there are some things you got to get over to, um, that may be prejudicing you towards the father in heaven. That is, you know, God, the father, because that's the way it was set up in that way in order to do that. What's the prophecy? It's the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2. And I call it the metal man prophecy. 
And this right here is front and center, the object lesson that was used to talk about a 2600 year prophecy. And it starts in 605 BC, and here we are today in the toes of clay and iron. I'm going to direct you to Daniel 2 to read it. It's narrative, and it's very, very fascinating. But basically, um, King has a dream. This is it. And Daniel is asked to interpret it. He does, and it's, it's just mind-blowing. These represent kingdoms, and in, they're in succession. They're continuous. And we are involved in this prophecy. And basically, this is an overview of the prophecy of Daniel 3, which I have not done yet, and all of Revelation and the rest of Daniel. This right here sets it up for everything else, including Matthew chapter 24. I'm prejudiced that the Catholic Church hid most, uh, um, most info about our story. I'm a former Catholic myself. Um, I, didn't, uh, I don't have a chip on my shoulder other than you know, I grew up a Catholic and I got very uh, bored. <laughs> but any 17-year-old is going to get bored with church. I've, I've, you know, it's the exception, not the rule. But, you know, looking into the theology of Catholicism, I realized that there was really uh, nothing for me there. Daniel 3. So, no, I, it may not be a trilogy. It may be more than that. The, the, the statue of Daniel 3 goes into some issues of what's going to happen at the very end of time by superimposing that over what happened and what the issues were over this golden object in Daniel 3. Daniel 2 goes into Daniel 3, and again, the narrative just continues, and it is absolutely uh, on the edge of your seat. Uh, in Revelation, it the... The issues in Revelation, you don't have to guess, by the way. The issues of Revelation are found in part right here in Daniel chapter 3. Keep searching a lot, revealed when you're ready. Exactly. If you want to know the truth, am I supposed to point? If you want to know the truth, you will find it. If you really have a heart that is wanting to know, you'll know it. There's a couple of ways you can. It lines up with scripture. It has a ring of truth. And after you've exhausted all the different possibilities out there, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Baptists, the Mormons, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Catholics, um, on and so on. Uh, once you look at them and compare and contrast, it's not that difficult to then wade through the, what is it, two or 3,000 Christian denominations uh, to find one that is like this like all the puzzle pieces fit together perfectly.